father-son dive team of Mike and Warren Fletcher must be able to handle technical diving to work on the Queen of Nassau. Diving with a mixture of gases for use at different depths. They are completing a series of workup dives on the open ocean, similar to the dives they will encounter on Queen of Nassau. NERC, or the National Undersea Research Center, has a strict dive protocol that is very different from the traditional commercial diving procedures the Fletchers were trained under. <laughs> NERC has taken cutting edge tech diving technology to a procedure that's both safe and reliable and has been accepted by the scientific dive community. All right, divers, dive, dive, dive. Tech diving is sophisticated scuba diving taken to a whole new level. It puts a diver in very deep water, relying solely on the equipment carried on his back. Large double tanks, not filled with air, but mixed gas. And additional single tanks of high percentages of oxygen for decompression. Nitrogen narcosis is something that happens to divers at depth. It's essentially a narcotic effect that the nitrogen in air has on the diver's brain when you dive deep. The general rule of thumb is Martini's Law that suggests that for every 15 meters of depth that you dive to, the narcotic effect is similar to drinking one dry martini. And that's why our tanks are filled with trimix that contain helium to reduce this high percentage of nitrogen that's normally contained in air. Tech diving is free swimming, highly skilled individuals working from a clear plan within a group. A group of divers that watch out for one another. Traditional deep diving is a diver in a helmet, fed different breathing gases through a hose. The diver here has far less independence, but far more support from the surface team that are working from a stationary dive platform or ship. From 33 meters, our return to the surface would be a succession of 3 meter stops with varying lengths of stay. It's absolutely critical that you not only time your stops exactly right, but equally important that you maintain the depth at those stops as well. When any diver dives deep, their body absorbs gases that can't be used. In this case of trimix diving, it's helium and nitrogen. The only way to get those gases out of your blood is to breathe them out through natural respiration. That's why we do these controlled ascents with stops and long periods of time where you can breathe those unwanted gases out of your blood. If for any reason you missed the stop and got forced to the surface, that gas has no choice but to form bubbles inside your blood. Bubbles inside a vein or an artery can be a serious problem. It can stop the flow of blood. A bubble to the brain could result in losing consciousness. A bubble to a lesser tissue, like a joint or the nerves, can cause convulsions or even permanent paralysis. And that, in a nutshell, is what decompression sickness is. As part of the dive preparation and workup, Doug had his practice for just such a situation. He's tightened up down there? Yeah. Roger that. Okay, ready to dive. Dive, dive, dive. Here we go. On board the support vessel Legacy, there's a portable recompression chamber, or what Doug likes to call the hyperbaric stretcher. Looks like we got it. How you doing, Joe? We have a seal. 10 feet. If a diver missed in-water decompression, he could be immediately repressurized, and a serious situation could be averted. OK, Joe, you're at 20 feet. How you doing, OK? Well, it's definitely a good piece of gear to have, but let's hope we never have to use it. I agree with that.